the Justice League, a group of unique individuals with abilities that defy the limitations of our world. But even the most spectacular superheroes can be made stronger with the aid of technology. To create tech worthy of the Justice League, filmmakers looked at the evolution of each character to determine how science and mechanics could serve their individual needs. As the only member of the League without superhuman abilities, Bruce Wayne's transition to Batman is only possible through human innovation. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. And that includes his collection of customized vehicles. Case in point, the Flying Fox, a vertical takeoff troop carrier immense enough to house the Batmobile within. This is the opening we just walked in through. The set starts in the cargo bay, goes all the way to the cockpit. We've built the entire interior of the craft. So you see the Batmobile here. And those are to scale. So imagine a section of the craft here, the Batmobile is sitting some wayside. For its noteworthy design, production designer Patrick Tatopoulos combined the aesthetics of the Batmobile with various military aircraft, ranging from Boeing C-17s to the European Airbus. And drawing influences from World War II fighter jets, Patrick pushed the cockpit back from the long nose to create a formidable vessel worthy of the caped crusader. This is not a sci-fi vehicle. It's actually very much based on bombers of today's in the last 20 years. A new type? Prototype troop carrier. There's an aspect of it that's very grounded. See the seating area here, the netting on the back, all those seats are designed to be lowered and they can sit. Scaling three stories high, the Flying Fox contains an array of technology, weaponry, and surveillance equipment. Anything a vigilante hero could ever need. I wanted to give him one new toy, which was real Batman, and came up with the idea of some drones. Just the idea that he would launch these drones out as little surveillance pieces or even armed to the teeth weapon pieces to go and do something. The Flying Fox is Batman's answer for taking to the skies, but Bruce Wayne is also prepared for battles that stay a little more grounded. Alfred, I need the Nightcrawler. Thought you'd never ask. With two modes of transport, the Nightcrawler can shift from tank to all-terrain climber with the flick of a switch. As we developed it and the language of Batman was in there, it sort of came together and became a vehicle that was believable. The whole top of the craft is built, but the actual legs and all the locomotion will be done in CG. We have a small motion base underneath the Nightcrawler. Action! Whatever I do here moves the hydraulic cylinders to where they need to be. Ah! He's, he's tall. To incorporate reality and functionality to the motion of the vehicle, visual effects base the articulation of the arms on real-world robotics and its heavy-duty look on forklifts and drilling machinery. When it goes into crawling mode, on each side of the tread, it has these spikes. And so when it plants the foot against the wall, right on contact, the spikes on either side go into the wall. And then the tips of the spikes kind of expand out a little bit to anchor it. So it drives each foot into the wall as it climbs up. It leaves a gigantic mess. <laughs> Bruce Wayne needs tech to survive on the dangerous streets of Gotham, but he isn't the only member of the Justice League to embrace the advantages technology offers. As someone with an intimate interest in quantum mechanics, mechanical engineering, and electronics, Barry Allen is well equipped to design his own protective suit. It's his. DIY self-preservation suit. He's trying to make something that's aerodynamic and to reduce friction as much as possible, but then something that can hold up in the high intensity speed and heat, and something that can also be grounding a lot of the currents that are coming through him because he doesn't yet know how to handle all of the current moving through him, and it's gotta go somewhere. Barry's extremely intelligent, and as a young person, great with technology. So we thought, well, what would Barry do? He's probably gone online, bought a 3D printer, researched incredible materials and things that can resist heat and energy. Who knows, he's so fast he might have stolen into NASA and grabbed some special materials that they're developing. Adopting the idea of a prototype, costume designer Michael Wilkinson and his team employed their own innovation to craft the costume. From sculpting bits by hand to using actual 3D printers, 
to developing custom fabrics. There's a sense with this suit that there's like lots of layers of different ideas, some parts that have sort of been very damaged as he's working things out. There's over a hundred pieces that are cast and adhered to the undersuit to create this costume. And then on top of that, you have this complex system of wires that crisscross across the body and they're all put on by hand, art finished and create this incredible sort of matrix across the surface of the costume. Is this a, a bad time to bring up my blood sugar? Very hungry. Technology may aid various members of the Justice League, but for Cyborg, it's a source of great conflict. I don't know how you got these gifts. Gift? No one else can do what you do. Unable to separate himself from the alien tech that keeps him alive, Cyborg is in constant contact with anything and everything electronic. The technology that he uses in this film is apocalyptic tech, because the mother box is actually what created him, what gave him his cybernetics. You were born of her. It's nothing that this world has ever seen. So he can fly. It imbues him with super strength. He can interface with anything technological. He has worlds of information at his disposal, not just from our galaxy, from other galaxies and universes, which is pretty cool. To create a hybrid of man and machine, filmmakers collaborated to create a superhero that felt otherworldly, but also echoed the look from the comics. There's an apocalyptic core in the center that helps power the suit. You'll see the facial structure is more of the traditional cyborg with a data stream eye in the center. This is amazing. The mother boxes are living machines. So the design for the cybernetic suit is almost twisted to sort of resemble the mother box. You'll see a lot of moving pieces, just constant, just in motion. Most of our design considerations that went into it were about the surface properties, the kind of galvanized metal look to some of his armor plates, like you see on sort of industrial metal plates. And we wanted to use this but introduce a kind of alien or exotic flavor to it. So we looked at images of crystallography and iridescence you see in bismuth ore and add this to the surface qualities that we assign to his body parts. Booyah. For the Justice League, technology is another tool used to defy the forces that threaten humanity. But in our world, a world without superheroes, technology can bridge the gap between the mundane and the extraordinary allowing filmmakers to conjure things on screen that once only existed in our imaginations. Whether it's vehicles capable of climbing walls or mechanical beings capable of almost anything, only by embracing the limitless potential of technology may these things one day transition from fantasy into reality.